I woke up this morning feeling a feeling I haven't felt in a long time. I'm sore. <laughs> I can't believe it. I work out so hard five days a week, sometimes six, and I never really get sore. But, oh, today, I'm sore. My back is sore. My pecs are sore. My biceps are sore. My legs are sore. My quadriceps. My neck is sore. Everything's sore. This never happens. Um, about two weeks ago, I went on a week-long backpacking trip in Colorado. I climbed five peaks. Two of them were 14,000 feet. Uh, the other three were 12,000 feet. I was lugging 30 to 40 pounds on my back. That's the backpack and the backpacking, right? And I wasn't this sore. So, you know, I thought it would be good to make a video and capture the things that have gone on in the last two days so that maybe in the future I can make myself sore again because being sore is awesome. It means that I did a good job at something, you know, because if I, if I managed to run my body down, I had to do a lot. So here we go. So it, let's start two days ago. So uh, two days ago, I threw a little birthday party for my, for my buddy. And, uh, you know, it's not a birthday party without the blow-up doll. So, you know, we had the blow-up doll. I smoked nine pounds of pork ribs in my smoker. I created a fruit pie cream tart and put some birthday candles in the little 3-5, because that's how old he was turning, put that in there. And I baked a batch of my favorite cookies, the uh, orange zest chocolate chip chippers, my grandma's recipe. So, uh, you know, I went to the gym that morning and I had a nice workout. I did like an hour of weights or so. I did an hour on the spin bike. I did half an hour, three miles of running, uh, some jump roping, you know, so I was in the gym for like, you know, a solid three, maybe four hours. That's usually what I do. Um, and then, you know, I come home and I just start prepping, right? The smoker had been running while I was at the gym. Uh, the, the pie I had made last night because I had, a, uh, I had a date the other day, so I made two pies, because you know, you should always make them in twos, right? You're gonna find a reason to have another pie. So you know, that the date went really nicely, and I had this other pie, so I thought, okay, what do I do with this other pie? Oh, it's my buddy's birthday, great. Now I have a birthday cake. And so I spent the whole rest of the day until like five o'clock after the gym, just uh, prepping the house for the party, setting up my folding tables and the chairs, getting the drinks out, getting the appetizers out, getting my board game set up, getting my Nintendo set up and my TV set up, putting some music on the cue list, cleaning up, lighting candles, making sure everything's arranged correctly, scrubbing the bathroom, clearing out the trash, like, you know, just getting the house ready for a party, right? And so, and then my little sister, she, you know, wants to hang out and I'm like, cool, why don't you, you know, do anything? I had a watermelon. She made agua fresca and other, some other kind of strawberry drink, which is sitting in my fridge still. And I finally finished up all the watermelon last night, just snacking all that stuff. I love watermelon. But the party was a hit. It was a success. I had like nine or 10 people over. We were playing Mario Kart. We were playing board games, code names, Splendor, just kind of like shooting the shit, having a good time, taking turns, putting dumb songs on the, on the speaker system. Um, and, you know, some of my friends were worried that my, my buddy was going to, you know, get like triggered or upset or something because, you know, people are touchy about their birthdays sometimes. But no, like he had a great time. You know, sometimes you just got to be a man and bottle your emotions up and chuck them out the window because everyone says, oh, don't do it on me on my birthday. And I mean, come on, that was my buddy. So, you know, he loved it. Everyone loved it. Everyone had a good time. It was great. So it was a great party. But, you know, I kept thinking like, dang, uh, it's getting late. I need eight hours of sleep because tomorrow, which is yesterday, Tomorrow, I'm doing CrossFit. Yeah, I've never done CrossFit before. Even though I do over an hour of cardio every time I go to the gym and I do, you know, throughout the week I do full body. I don't do full body in a single workout. I do push, pull, legs, and recently I added arms. So push, pull, legs, and gotta get those arms. And so throughout the course of the week, I do work my entire body. Um, but CrossFit is, you know, basically an entire body in a workout. So I knew I was gonna need some sleep, so you know, Finally, I get, I get the birthday boy and my little sister out the door and I just, I just go to sleep. I'm like, the cleanup can wait. I have to sleep right now because I was tired. Um, and so I wake up and I get to the CrossFit gym on time and I brought my cookies because they didn't need all my cookies at the party. So I brought my cookies and I was like, oh, you know, there are a bunch of CrossFit people. They're probably not going to want to eat these cookies. 
They probably are very particular about what they eat. And I was right, no one touched the cookies. But that's fine, because I found some other people to uh, give the cookies to later that day. But let's, let's keep things going at a pace. So I get to the CrossFit gym, and they're very uh, religious, so they spoke with me about religion for an hour and 15 minutes or so, and I thought, okay, that's, this is cool. Didn't know that people like this existed. It's interesting, you know, very, very spiritual people. Reminded me of Santa Cruz, so that was, uh, that was new. And then we did the CrossFit workout, which was awesome. It was a wave repeated four times, so a, a wave of, uh, I believe, three different exercises. So it was a uh, rower, and then it was some kind of compound full body movement that involved a barbell and a squatting motion and an overhead. So uh, I can't even, I don't even want to try it right now because I'm so sore. I'm probably just gonna like pull something. Here, let's see if I can go really slow, okay? All right. <clears throat> okay, so the barbell's on the rack, right? So you take the barbell off the rack, you let it down. Oh goodness. Okay, yeah, okay. And then you get down to like a, 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 a squatting position, a squatting position, and then you go into a snatch, right, with the barbell over your head, and then these guys are sadistic. They have you do an overhead barbell squat. So you squat down with the barbell over your head, and that's one. And we had to do like, I can't remember, I think like for the first wave of the four waves, I think we, oh man. I think we had to do like uh, 30 or 50 of those. It was ridiculous, okay? It was just, it was ridiculous. So rower, some kind of crazy compound barbell overhead squat thing going on, uh, and then pull-ups. So they had me do, I think it was like 50 pull-ups for the first round. And I'll usually do 30 pull-ups on a pull day, like a back day, but I do them in sets of five because I'm a wussy. Uh, but I was supposed to do 50 before moving on with the next wave of the four waves. So I had a resistance band hanging from the bar that my foot went into to provide some uh, you know, leverage so that it wasn't as difficult to do the pull-ups. So all in all, I did four waves, right? So rower, overhead, squat, barbell thing, pull-ups, and then you do it three more times, that whole cycle. And each time it was a little less meters on the rower, uh, a slightly different variation of the overhead barbell squat, uh, and less repetitions, and also less repetitions for the um, pull-ups. And by the fourth wave, I had finished it, and it was 46 minutes. I was sweating as much as when I do a brutal cycling, like spinning session, and my heart was beating, and I was tired. So thoroughly impressed with the CrossFit workout. Uh, they actually managed to make me sweat a lot. They got my heart rate high. They made me tired. I had done a leg day three days prior, and I was worried that my quad was gonna get pulled, so I had to be very careful with that. I almost pulled my quad right in the first round of exercises, but I managed to get through the whole workout without pulling any muscles or hurting myself. And, uh, you know, I would say like uh, eight out of 10, nine out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10, I don't know, it was great. Would do again, would totally do again. CrossFit seems pretty sick. I like CrossFit. So then after the CrossFit workout, my friend and I, we went and got some tacos at this place and uh, they were great tacos. I had five, uh, two of them were asada and some other stuff, it was delicious. I asked them for some chipotle mayo, which is, you know, tons of extra calories. It's not got any protein, but whatever, man. If you're eating out with your friend, you gotta have a good time, you gotta have some good food. So dipping my tacos in the chipotle mayo, you know, that was a good time. So then my friend takes off and I think, well, you know, the CrossFit was fun, but in my personal opinion, it's basically just cardio. I mean, it's not, like, it's literally not. We were doing squats and pull-ups, but still, I was like, 46 minutes, come on, that's not all I need, like, I need more. So I went back to my gym, not the CrossFit gym, and I did an arm day, because, you know, arms, they, they recover really fast. They only need, like, a what, a day or two of recovery? Not even two. They need, like, a day of recovery, and they're good to go. My arms were fresh. I think I had done a um, pull day the day before. So, you know, maybe my biceps were a little sore, but they were not, you know. So I did an arm day and I really had a good arm day. I, I did the dips while staring in the mirror to watch my form. They did not have a preacher curl machine, so I did an easy bar curl and I made sure to let my arms go all the way down, which is probably why I'm sore here today. I did uh, 
swing curls where you have a bar, a, a dumbbell in each hand and you swing it, swing it. So it's like a hammer curl. It's a hammer curl, but it's to the side. And my trainer taught me this. You're supposed to use some body English, you know, you, you cheat the weight up a bit, but this was my, this was my second to last set for the arm day. So I really wanted to get a pump and I wanted my arms to be sore. So I, after I swang it up, I really, oh, it hurts just doing it right now. <laughs> really slowly, oh goodness. Yeah, whatever. I let the bar, the dumbbell down really slowly on each rep and I did 10 reps for each arm, so 20 reps, but it's an ISO movement. So if I say 10 reps, it's actually 20 because it's symmetry on the body. Two arms, two body parts, right? So 10 reps, 10 reps here, 10 reps there, repetitions, right? So one, one, two, two, all the way to 20, right? Or 10 rather. Uh, so, you know, that was great. And then, you know, I ran 20 minutes. You know, I was like, I don't need to do an hour on the spin bike. I did a CrossFit class for 46 minutes. Probably fine, right? Okay, so I get all this workout done with me, right? I got, I got the CrossFit in the morning, eat the tacos with the friend, and they wouldn't eat my cookies. Go to the gym a second time, do my own workout. So I head home and my friend's texting me, different friend. She's like, are we gonna play, you know, Magic the Gathering? And I'm like, yeah, but it was too late. I was too slow. So she's like, well, just meet me at the place. So, so I meet her at the place. It's the coffee house where my uh, writing club meets up. It's not my club, I'm just a participant. And I'm one of the worst participants. I don't show up on a regular basis. I would say I do show up at least two times a month, but they meet like eight times a month. So at least. So I'm really not the, the greatest member, but they like me and I like being there, so it's fine. Um, so I show up and there's not enough time to play a magic game. So my friend's a little bummed out, but you know, it's whatever. And I'm just hanging out with my friend and the leader of the club and it's fine. And they read my play script because I wrote a play script. I mean, it's not literally a play script. It's a one shot adventure for a tabletop role playing game. It's kind of like a murder mystery. I've been running it for some of my friends uh, over uh, video conferencing back in back uh, back on the West Coast through you know the virtual internet, right? Um, so they they read my play script and they liked it. They gave me some pointers. Uh, this one guy in the room, he's an excellent writer. He I think he's a professional writer, just pretending to be an amateur because he's he's so good. He gave me a link to an article called by this website called The Alexandrian, and I started reading the article, I learned about the three clue, three clue rule, where if you want your players to discover something, in a, like in a mystery, then you must lay at least three clues. So if there's a werewolf, this was an example used in the article, then there might be a trail of footsteps that starts as human footsteps, but ends as wolf footsteps. Ooh. There might be claw marks and bite marks around the bodies. And maybe one of the victims had a gun loaded with silver bullets. Three clues that would lead your players to suspect that there's a werewolf in their midst. So that's the three clue rule. And then there, from there, there was other articles that were linked in the article uh, that I read. So I read some of the other articles and I just started falling asleep. I couldn't keep my eyes open. I'm sitting there in the writer's club and I, I was, snow I, was, I was snoozing off. I didn't actually fall asleep because I would have been so rude, but I was having a hard time staying awake. So, um, so I drove home and uh, ate some dinner. I did estimate the calories I ate yesterday and it was a little over 3,000, which is a lot more than I've been eating the last week since I got back from the backpacking trip. Um, and normally I wouldn't want to eat that many calories because I'm still trying to get rid of this gut so I can have some abs showing. And I've been making a lot of progress. I've lost several pounds. But, um, you know, after doing a CrossFit workout and then also doing a brutal arm day and the amount of running around that I was doing yesterday, I think yesterday was a good day to eat, you know, 3,000 calories. And most of it was just uh, the, the leftover pork ribs that I smoked in my smoker. So, um, yeah, today is the next day. It's the morning. Uh, I'm using my tripod that I just got from Walmart for like 20 bucks. I, I'm really blown away, honestly. I bought one on Amazon years ago and it wasn't even close to this nice and it was twice as expensive. Walmart's got some good stuff. Anyway, uh, once I finish uh, recording this video, I'm probably gonna have like a tiny amount of food just to get some protein in me in the morning. 
and head to the gym. But I'm not gonna work out, I'm just gonna do cardio. I'm gonna do an hour on the spin bike, I'm gonna do my running, all that stuff, you know, get like an hour 45, maybe two hours in of cardio. And because I'm supposed to drive an hour to a neighboring city for the workout for today, and I'm gonna die, I tell you what, because I promised my, my friend, I said, I promised her we were gonna do legs and butt, okay? And I really like doing butt because, you know, I want a bigger butt and the butt really pays off. To have a, to have a strong butt, it pays off a lot. When I went backpacking two weeks ago, I never once had to stop for a breather going up the mountain. Even when we were at like 14,000 feet, I never technically had to stop. I did have to slow down and pace myself, but I mean, I practically ran up one of the 14,000 peaks, uh, 14,000 foot peaks, and it's your glutes, your, your glutes. They power you when you walk uphill. So, you know, people think whatever they think about doing butt exercises at the gym, but I had an experience where they 100% paid off. I, I was infatigable, indefatigable, I don't know how to say that word. I could not be fatigued when I was going up hills. Um, not enough to stop at least, even with my 30 to 40 pound backpacking pack on my back. So we're gonna do glutes or butt and we're gonna do legs. And I'm worried because I haven't had my quads and legs be this sore in, uh, I can't remember. Yeah. So if I do legs this evening with my friend, I might hurt myself. So I'm probably gonna have to, I'm probably gonna have to foam roll. I'm gonna have to do foam rolling. Um, it's called myostatic stretching. If you wanna be all nerdy about it, you know, it, uh, it, it stretches out the, the fascia between your muscle fibers to clear out the lactic acid. You know, I actually should have a foam roller somewhere or I left it at my parents' house, but um, they for sure have foam rollers at the gym, so. You know, probably gonna have to foam roll and stretch and have a warm up and all that. Um, but it should be good. I mean, she's like, I mean, it's not like I have to lift a lot of weight to impress her or something. She's, you know, we're just gonna lift whatever weight we, we need to lift, but uh, it should be fun. We're gonna do, we're gonna do lunges. Oh, that's... We're gonna do walking lunges and side lunges. We're gonna do glute bridges. We're gonna do barbell back squats. We're gonna do hamstrings. We're gonna do leg extensions. Let's see, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna do side, let's see, abduct, adduct. We're gonna do, we're gonna do adductors with the cable machine. We're probably gonna do abductors with a machine machine. And if I can find the right attachment for the cables, we're gonna do donkey kicks with the cable machine. That's where you put a cable around your ankle with the, with the cable machine in front of you. You can grab it, right? And you go like this. And that is another butt or like hamstring exercise. So, you know, her and I, we're gonna get the best butts. And then I'll drive back here and it'll be like eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, really the only question remaining is what I do between the, uh, cardio this morning and driving out at like four o'clock to the neighboring city, which is going to take me an hour. And that, well, I can't sit around and do nothing because that's not in me. I can never sit around and do nothing. So I'll probably either work on one of my play scripts for the tabletop role-playing games. It's happening more than a week from now, but it's good to prepare in advance so that I'm not you know, procrastinating and then finding myself with a mountain full of work and only a few hours to do it. So, you know, maybe I'll prep a little bit for my game next week and write down some ideas. I have video materials for the birthday and also the backpacking trip so I could work on a new YouTube video that's not just like a talking head like this. Um, oh, and of course I've got a mountain of yard work piled up that needs to get taken care of. So I'm sure I'll find something to do between the cardio and uh, driving to that neighboring city. But yeah, I'm tired today. I'm sore and I'm tired. So good job, me. You finally managed to make yourself sore and tired. <laughs> uh, people thought it was impossible, but no, you can be made sore and tired. Hope you guys have a great day. 
And don't forget to work out and exercise.